Okay, so here we are in Unity, and I'm going to be showing off some new features and some adjustments that I've been making in a game that I've been developing. Um, for those of you that are unfamiliar with this project, I am developing a game that is about German Romantic landscape painting and drawing equivalences between that historical moment and a contemporary moment in digital media, and some of the similarities that I and finding both culturally and politically between then and now. This game um, is being built in two software in two pieces of software, one of them being Blender and the other one being Unity. I'm showing off some of the Unity based stuff today um, just because that was kind of where I left off last. I did a recording of this kind. Um, I had been maintaining documentation of this work for some time uh, over the course of the past six months, but I decided to migrate the conversation that I was having in a kind of interior academic environment into uh, a more expanded, less private, and um, um, kind of more public environment. There's many reasons for me to do this, but one of the primary reasons is that I want to expand the conversation outside of um, the academic environment that I'm in to encourage feedback and responses and um, input from those outside of the academic environment that I'm currently existing in. So uh, that might not be very clear or um, lucid to a lot of people, um, but hopefully to some people it will be very clear what I'm talking about. So without further ado, I'm going to go straight into the game and I'm going to just show kind of the mechanics of where I'm at right now. So as Unity is loading this up, um, previous iterations of this had um, some kind of not so great controls, um, no interactive environments, and the texturing of the environment was, um, or of the map, was something left to be desired. Um, a lot of those things have currently been, I wouldn't say fixed, but have been modified to be much more playable, much more dynamic, and to actually have integration into the game. So here we are playing a character. Um, this character is controlled as a third person uh, entity. Um, for those of you that have been following along, you'll notice that the uh, turning controlling apparatus is a lot uh, more fluid, um, not nearly as jerky. Um, so I'm really happy about that. You'll also also notice that the environment is textured, although I haven't completed the skybox texture yet. And you'll also notice that the uh, figure himself uh, has gone through a bit of a revision and then also is undergoing some uh, texture modifications as we speak. So I'm going to show off some of the newer features in this game. Uh, one of the newer features is that you see these primitive rock environment or these primitive rocks that are going to be interspersed throughout the environment. Um, these are uh, custom-built primitives that will um, exist throughout the games, and they're basically just rocks um, that have collision detection. Um, some of these rocks will have um, more specific modifications in the future, um, but right now they operate kind of just as uh, further, further ornamentation of the landscape that is already in place. Um, the big feature, besides um, changing the controls and modifying them to be a lot more smooth, is that I now have these interactive objects within the game that are um, that exist with these prompts. Um, this prompt, um, well, before we get a chance to read it, I'm going to show you how this prompt fades away as you navigate away from it, and then also fades up again when you're close to it. So it will encourage players to um, be close to these environments uh, or, excuse me, be close to these, I keep on saying environments, be close to these objects in order to read the text that's in them. Uh, unfortunately, right now, I've already experienced a glitch that I'm interfacing, which is occasionally these, um, if you're moving in and out of these um, signposts of these areas, sometimes um, the text prompt will not work properly. Um, so I'm still working on debugging that right now. Um, but let's go ahead and reboot the game so that you can actually read uh, this text that I have in this initial signpost. And this initial signpost is going to be somewhat similar to the text that will um, introduce the game. So uh, the text reads, you are a ghost, a ghost of a past, not forgotten, but stuck. You are hindered by your own obsolescence and indetermination. 
You, s you must seek five paths of absolution, five moments of redemption from this history that haunts you and chains you to a past unfulfilled, but not all lost. So as you navigate away from this, uh, that will disappear. And then as you go towards another object, another prompt, and this is just saying a sign to show that this works for two different game objects. Uh, multiple events and game objects will exist within this environment. And then this fades away. So I haven't um, completed the texturing of the entire environment. As you can see, it's it's rather expansive and will include a lot of interactive objects throughout the game. Um, but I'm just really happy with showing with that the, the, slew, the smooth controlling is actually working properly um, and that the texturing is, is to my liking. Uh, there will be more, um, of course, interactive objects throughout the game, but um, I just wanted to kind of showcase this right now. Uh, I want to showcase also another feature that I've implemented into this game um, that is a bit further along to get to, so I'm going to kind of shortcut us into showing off this area. If you'll just bear with me really quickly, I'm kind of warping the start location of our character to another area. Um, oop, that didn't work. Sorry, I need to increase his elevation um, because this area is um, higher up than previous areas. Um, so just bear with me one second and we will get to what I want to show you. So what I'm trying to show you here is this one area of the map um, that is uh, one of the kind of ultimate quote-unquote locations of the game. Uh, this ultimate location is a beach um, that is meant to emulate a beach from one of Caspar David Friedrich's paintings. Um, you'll notice that I can go into the water here, but only to a certain depth and only in certain locations. It's because I've created a kind of collision detection here. Um, this area, however, will have an interactive object that will prompt one of the uh, quote-unquote endings of the game. Um, but I just wanted to showcase uh, the water um, that I'm implementing in the game, um, which looks nice right now. Uh, it'll look even better once I have the skybox initiated because then this will actually operate as a horizon and the skybox will blend in with um, the uh, horizon line here. So it'll look a lot better. And also there'll be kind of some reflective texturing based upon the skybox that's not just this kind of generic blue. So um, that's kind of it for right now. That's all of the new features that I've implemented in, in this game. Um, but I'm going to be using uh, the blog that I normally use um, for uh, kind of general content that I'd be working on, uh, I'm going to be using that blog instead for um, not only contributing to that content, not only following in those footsteps, but also in, in showcasing developments of this game. Again, as, an, as a gesture of migrating the conversation that I've been having in a more private setting into a more public setting. So I hope that uh, that'll probably do it for right now. Um, I'm really excited about this development, and I can't wait to share more with you soon. Okay, thanks a lot.